India's Vikram headed for victory. Space icons bless Isro's baby Vikram. Moon just 25 kilometers below our lander. Lunar history by biggest democracy. New chapter in India's Moon Tryst. Top focus on Five Live. The moon's getting all set to welcome Vikram, India's very own lander that's part of Chandrayaan 3. Tomorrow, in just about 25 hours from now, the Vikram lander is going to come softly to touch down on the lunar surface. And then you're going to see the Pragyan rover roll out and experience the moon firsthand. We can't wait to bring you that coverage, viewer, of the final stage of the Chandrayaan-3 mission. Because this lander, Vikram, is currently hovering at about 25 kilometers above the lunar surface. Well, not quite hovering. It's moving at a, quite, uh, at a very fast rate. But it's soon going to begin its final descent. And while what we've recreated here isn't quite the same thing, as what we're going to see tomorrow, hopefully on the telemetry screens, and then finally from the actual cameras themselves, this is India's moonshot becoming lunar history. Thanks as always for being with me. This is a special broadcast of Five Live. I'm Shiv Arur. Let's get you to the headlines. India Today accesses CCTV images of Delhi rape accused and his wife attempting to evade arrest. Delhi Commission for Women Chief writes to Amit Shah, demands meeting with victim or family, also asks for probe on delay of Delhi Babu's arrest. Shocking Bihar VVIP culture on display, ambulance blocked for Chief Minister Nitish Convoy, despite patients' family crying while Bihar top cop seen holding umbrella for RJD Supremo Lalu Prasad. South Africa hosts 15th BRICS Summit. Prime Minister Modi to reach Johannesburg very shortly amidst wide suspense over India-China bilateral. Superstar Rajnikanth defends his gesture of bowing down to touch UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath's feet, says it's a habit. Congress mocks the Rajni Yogi meet, calls it a courtesy call to the next Prime Minister. India's teenage chess prodigy, Pragnyananda, has just begun his final match at the World Chess Championship, the World Cup in Azerbaijan against world number one, Magnus Carlsen. A billion hearts are beating for India's chess grandmaster. It's just become real, viewer. 25 hours from now, today, at just past 6 p.m., the Vikram lander is going to come softly and touch down on the surface of our moon. 25 hours to go. The lander is currently 25 kilometers in orbit around the moon and is scouting for that precise landing location. In fact, ISRO just sent us the latest images that have been captured by the lander's cameras. Here's the latest from what we know. India's moon mission is hours away from a historic climax. Chandrayaan's Vikram lander is approaching the moon rendezvous. Saying hello to Chandrama, snapping breathtaking images from close vicinity, showing moon in all its glory. With details of the unexplored far site, complete with billionaire old craters. 
Indian Space Agency asserted that the mission is fully on track. The system is undergoing regular checks to ensure a smooth touchdown. It is almost similar to what we uh, designed or developed for Chandrayaan 2, except for instead of Orbiter now, because Orbiter is anyway working fine right. and it is still useful and it is giving a lot of in important data which will be utilized for Chandrayaan 3 landing also. Mm -hmm. So we decided that uh, we Orbiter will be replaced by a propulsion module. Uh, which, which duty is to take it to the orbit of moon surface. ISRO is not taking any chances, especially after crash of the Russian moon mission. Keeping another landing site ready for Sunday touchdown if parameters aren't ideal on Wednesday. Former ISRO chief K. Sivan broke down the final maneuvers moments before the planned touchdown. I want to start by asking you about the lunar mission uh, of uh, the Russians which crashed uh, uh, very unfortunately over the weekend without being able to land successfully. You know, given what has happened with the Luna 25, which was Russia's first attempt to land a spacecraft off the moon and that ending in failure, you know, would that increase the levels of anxiety of the team in the space center of ISRO at this moment? Does that make you one extra level more anxious? No, it is not so. First of all, uh, Luna uh, mission failure and uh, this one, they are not related. Luna, actually, that is have its own system, its own uh, the sensor, thrusters, and it may have its own characteristics. But uh, we have our own system, our own thruster, our own sensors, which it, it has been functioning very nicely and without any problem. And uh, till now, we are uh, uh, achieved what we want in a perfect way. And I'm sure that this will repeat on 23rd also. So we'll get a good uh, uh, landing and uh, we are not getting anxious, uh, uh, disturbed by the Luna 25 failure. We are, they are not related. They are not a similar system. They are different system. Okay. So we are confident that we are uh, will be able to achieve without any problem. A billion cheers, prayers, and wishes are meanwhile pouring in as India roots for Chandrayaan 3. एक बहुत बड़ा इतिहास भारत के सभी विशेषज्ञों ने हमारे वैज्ञानिकों ने रचा है और प्रधानमंत्री जी के नेतृत्व में भारत नई ऊंचाइयां तो छू ही रहा था भारत का तिरंगा केवल देश के अंदर नहीं लेकिन विश्व पटल पर पर अब हमारी यही कोशिश है कि वो तिरंगा चांद पे भी गाड़ के रखा जाए Special pujas are being held in temples and namaz is being offered in mosques, all for Chandrayaan's success. The lander is expected to touch down on Moon's South Polar region at 6.04 p.m. on Wednesday. We wish India a grand success in conquering the Moon. With Akshita Nandagopal in Bengaluru and Milan Sharma in Ahmedabad, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, let me just show you step by step how the landing will actually take place, technically speaking. Remember that the Vikram lander is currently floating between 25 and 30 kilometers above the moon at this point of time. It will have a controlled slowdown to reduce its speed because its speed currently is still quite high. The moon, which has, of course, its own gravity, will guide the lander downwards at about 60 meters per second. That's a very, very high speed which needs to be decelerated further. The Chandrayaan twists slightly. The Vikram lander twists slightly, aligns itself with the landing spot. It's a maneuver of nearly 90 degrees that happens it then hovers about 7.5 kilometers above the moon's surface. And that's when final approach 
officially begins. There are sensors on board the Vikram lander which are calibrated to check the moon surface and confirm its earlier readings as well. The lander then becomes completely vertical, perpendicular with the lunar surface. It hovers at about 800 to 1300 meters above the landing spot that has been finalized and identified as confirmed. The altitude then carefully decreases to just about 150 meters, very, very low. And then there's no looking back. The lander touches down on the moon's surface. There will be live feedback throughout this entire situation uh, to the ISRO ground control in Bengaluru. They'll have both visual as well as telemetric data of this entire final sequence. But it is going to be a nail-biting finish, only 25 hours to go. I want to go across to India today's Akshita Nanda Gopal. Uh, she's our space girl. She's in Bengaluru. She's been meeting ISRO scientists, members from Team Chandrayaan-3 as well. Uh, Akshita, it's all coming true now. It's finally real. No more waiting. Only 25 hours to go. That's right, Shivon. Your show tomorrow at this time, maybe in 10 minutes from now, is when officially the soft landing process will begin at 5.20 p.m. I'll be inside Istrak, which is on the outskirts of Bengaluru in Pena. You'll, of course, be getting us those updates from the studio, but that's when the process actually begins. It will then go on for about 40, 45 minutes at 5.58 or so, Shiv, because 6.04 is when the soft landing ends. At 5.58 or so, the scientists will put up their hands and say, look, now... It's all about the design that we have built. It's all about the automated uh, thrusters, the sensors, all taking over and ensuring the soft landing. So till then, the scientists will have some control in deciding exact spot, deciding how much we lower it, how to bring it down from 6,000 kilometers per hour to an absolute standstill to zero kilometers. So that really is going to be a focus. 5.20 to 6.04. I have a feeling we're all going to be, you know, skipping a few heartbeats. It's going to be nail-biting moments but for now it's very clear shift the message from Istro. they're saying look there's absolutely no reason to be concerned there's absolutely no reason to be nervous be 100 percent excited what we're hearing is and i'm heading there right now to pina which is where all our scientists the chandrayaan team is currently seated the mood is upbeat they're all gung-ho they're excited about tomorrow and that hopefully spreads and rubs off on all of us because the messaging is clear everything's going on track everything's on schedule and as they said it's smooth sailing for now Akshita is heading to Isro now, so she's going to be live anchoring from there between 6 and 7. So catch her special broadcast uh, between 6 and 7 from Isro, the only anchor broadcasting from Isro this evening right before the Chandrayaan final phase tomorrow. Now I want to show you, uh, you know, uh, a piece of information that Akshita shared with us earlier that's become very, very crucial. And this is Isro's plan B. Now the Vikram lander is going to try to land, like I just showed you, from a height of currently 30 kilometers. Over the next 25 hours, it's going to uh, descend down to 150 meters for that final landing. Its speed uh, uh, will be 1.68 kilometers per second during that final descent before it slows down completely using its thrusters. The Vikram will balance with the lunar gravity. It will uh, uh, use the lunar gravity as an assist to, uh, to align itself completely with the lunar surface. Reducing speed is crucial to averting any kind of mishap that may have happened uh, like in 2019. ISRO, though, has a plan B if landing per parameters do not turn out to be optimal. And remember, things can happen like that. The landing could possibly, theoretically, be postponed till August the 27th. Tomorrow is the 23rd, 6.04 p.m. is when the landing is most likely to happen. But in case something suboptimal emerges during the landing phase, ISRO has a plan B to push things by a few days until the situation and circumstances are more predictable. The second landing spot, we understand, is about 400 kilometers away from the first, again, on the moon's south pole. The ISRO plan B has been formulated after the accident that befell the Luna 25, the Russian spacecraft lander that crashed on the moon's surface just a few days ago. That was supposed to land a couple of days before the Vikram lander, but that unfortunately was lost. Now, 
As the countdown to this landing continues, Akshita, who you just heard live from Bengaluru, also spent some time at the planetarium in Bengaluru to get you some of the voices of the new generation that perhaps is going to be the most inspired by what they see between today and tomorrow. Take a look. And I've got with me two young, bright minds who are here at the planetarium to catch a glimpse of what Chandrayaan 3 looks like and to learn a thing or two. Sanidhi and uh, Trishika, both of whom are in seventh grade, I caught them here at the planetarium. How excited are you about Chandrayaan 3, uh, Sanidhi? I'm really excited for Chandrayaan 3 and uh, we every year celebrate International Moon Day on July 20th and the theme for this year's Moon Day is, uh, is um, International Moon Day is Sustainability and Exploration of Moon and I'm really excited for Chandrayaan 3 and it's, it's the proud moment for all of us, uh, for all the Indians as Chandrayaan, as, as the Chandrayaan 3 was successfully launched by Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. The goal is to land the lander and rover on the moon, on the lunar surface of moon, and I'm really excited for the Chandrayaan three. Uh, when you heard uh, uh, Trishka about Chandrayaan three, does it make you want to become an astronaut in the future? Does it make you want to become a space scientist? Actually, when I was uh, younger, I felt I I want to become an astronaut, and it was my dream when I was younger, and. I was very, really excited when Chandrayaan came because um, I like um, the space, um, astronauts, etc. And we, being an Indian, uh, we are all proud because of Chandrayaan. And um, we are um, like expecting more upcoming results. And um, we are so excited for a um, perfect landing on the moon. Abhi hum log ek Hanuman Mandir pe हम लोग इसरो के नए रॉकेट क्राफ्ट चंद्रयान 3 की को प्रेयर्स देने आए हैं कि वो सक्सेसफुली मून के ऊपर लैंड कर जाए यहां पे हम प्रे करने आए हैं कि चंद्रयान 3 अच्छे से सेफली मून पे लैंड हो जाए Now the final journey to the moon is going to be a nail-biting one. I can assure you that we're in touch with ISRO's leadership and the team that's managing the lander uh, at the moment, including the orbiter that's circling around the moon and has established contact and is taking pictures of its own. Things are calm and confident. Things are sailing along smoothly at this point of time. And there is no reason to believe that 25 hours from now, things aren't going to be an absolute beauty of a soft landing for India. Take a look at this report on the final journey of Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft and propulsion module, having spent 34 days together, parted ways and embarked on their respective journeys on 17th August. The propulsion module separated from the lander while in lunar orbit. A day before on 16th August, the spacecraft had successfully completed a crucial firing operation, placing it into an orbit of 153 kilometers by 163 kilometers around the moon. This marked the completion of the lunar bound maneuvers and brought the spacecraft one step closer to its ultimate goal of landing on the south pole of the moon. This is a, it's a really a vital, vital element because uh, now you look at your Chandrayaan 3 mission, basically consists of uh, uh, three plus one four modules type of thing. First is LVM 3 which has taken the uh, composite of uh, Vikram lander uh, propulsion module and the Pregnan, the rover, uh, to the 36,000 kilometer uh, highly elliptical orbit. From there, uh, using a five uh, earthbound maneuvers, earthbound maneuvers, uh, propulsion module has taken the composite of Vikram lander and the Pregnan to the lunar orbit. Again, the lunar orbit also from the elliptical orbit, it has now brought to the near circular close to the moon, around 153 kilometer orbit, it has brought 153 by 163 kilometer. So now, uh, the important thing is, uh, fi final thing is softly and securely landing on the moon. The propulsion module is a box-like structure with a large solar panel and a cylinder on top. 
It is responsible for carrying the lander and rover configuration until the spacecraft reaches a hundred kilometers lunar orbit. The propulsion module will now continue its role as a communication relay satellite. Now Vikram has to take its own course of action. Further it has to separate. So even after, after separating, then the major event comes. The major event is uh, uh, four uh, 800 Newton thrusters. They have to fire to take it to the lower orbit. They, that also will be done in two steps and uh, ensuring that all the three systems are working properly. These two steps it will go down, put 100 kilometer orbit, then from 100 to go to the uh, 30 kilometer orbit, 100 by 30 kilometer orbit. That's a very, very vital. But when it's going very closer, closer to the earth, so the position of the module has to be ascertained properly. Carrying hopes of billions of Indians, Bahubali rocket LVM-3 lifted off from Sri Harikota on 14th of July with Chandrayaan-3 aiming to land a rover on the moon's surface. The takeoff was picture perfect. More than a month later, it's now on its last leg to make history an Indian space dream come true. India, remember, is a country where science exists alongside spirituality and it has done so for years together. And that's why no surprises that from puja to namaz to prayers, the spiritual, the faithful and those who have every confidence in Isro and their science are also doing their bit to send up their prayers for the success of the Vikram lander. Take a look at these reports from all across the country. चंद्रयान के चांद पर पहुंचने की आहट भर से ही देश भर में उत्साह का माहौल है मध्य प्रदेश की राजधानी भोपाल में चंद्रयान की सुरक्षित लैंडिंग को लेकर के रुद्राभिषेक किया जा रहा है ये न केवल चंद्रयान की सुरक्षित लैंडिंग बल्कि इस मिशन की सफलता के लिए भी भगवान भोलेनाथ से ये कामना की जा रही है और यहाँ पे बकायदा एक तिरंगा और साथ ही में एक फोटो जो है चंद्रयान का वो भी लगाया गया है ताकि यहाँ पर एक संदेश देने की कोशिश की जा सके की ये रुद्राभिषेक जो है वो क्यों किया जा रहा है चंद्रशेखर तिवारी यहाँ पे मौजूद है उनसे हम बात करते हैं क्यों आपको लगता है कि इस बात क्योंकि ये तो विज्ञान का खेल है विज्ञान के बीच में अध्यात्म और धर्म विज्ञान हो चाहे कुछ हो धर्म के बिगर कोई संभव नहीं है पुष्पक विमान तो कितने वर्षों पहले था ना देख रहे हैं आप ग्यारह ब्राह्मण हमारे जो है बटुक संकल्प के साथ अनुष्ठान कर रहे हैं यह अवश्य सफल होगा देख सकते हैं चंद्रयान की सुरक्षित लैंडिंग और मिशन चंद्रयान की सफलता पूर्वक पूरा होने की कामना के साथ फिलहाल राजधानी भोपाल में रुद्राभिषेक किया जा रहा है और जो तमाम ब्राह्मण बटुक यहां पे मौजूद है वो पूरी तरीके से आश्वस्त है इस बार चंद्रयान की चांद की सतह पर सुरक्षित लैंडिंग को लेकर क्या अमरीश के साथ अवीश पाल सिंह भोपाल आज तक so what happens once vikram successfully touches down on the moon and successfully it will touch down 24 hours from now the Pragyan rover is going to be rolling out. A lot of experiments are going to happen and we're going to get some photographs. What is that imprint going to look like? What is that first impact of the Vikram landing? Take a look. We explain it to you. Vikram will prepare for rover Pragyan to carry out its mission right after the successful landing on the south pole of the moon. The rover will then conduct in situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface. As it starts to move, it will leave an indelible mark of India on the lunar surface. The back wheels of the rover have logos of ISRO and Ashoka's line emblem. They are not on the same wheels, so the two parallel imprints on one side will create the ISRO logo and the other will mark the Ashoka's line emblem. India has already left its mark on the moon during the Chandrayaan-1 mission in 2008. On 14 November 2008, the moon impact probe separated from the Chandrayaan-1 orbiter and struck the South Pole in a controlled manner. And with that, India became the fourth country to place its flag insignia on the moon, near the crater Shackleton. The location of impact was named Jawahar Point. Nearly 15 years later, Pragyan, with a lifespan of one lunar day or 14 Earth days, is all set for a much bigger leap. 
with 26 kg mass, 50 watt power and two payloads. It will make history for ISRO by demonstrating a rover roving on lunar surface, carrying out qualitative and quantitative elemental analysis to derive the chemical composition. In for mineralogical composition of the South Pole lunar surface. This is critical for mineral and chemical finding as well as for ISRO's future manned moon mission, Gaganyaan. As our gaze remains fixed on the moon and as we get closer to the lunar surface, thanks to Vikram tomorrow, let's also remember that India's tryst with space is not new. It stretches over six decades to the early parts of a newly independent India where our founding fathers had done a great deal to give this country an excellent cutting-edge space research program. ISRO was the result of that. Here's a look in this report of everything that India has achieved in space and it still is the admiration of the entire world. <laughs> India's pride soars high. Astronaut Rakesh Sharma becomes the first Indian to explore the celestial realm in a joint space mission with what was then Soviet Union. But the country achieved its first astronomical feat much before in 1963. Naika Pache, a two-stage sounding rocket imported from the United States, blasted off from a fishing village near Tiruvananthapuram in Kerala. Over the last six decades, India's space program has evolved enormously. From launch vehicles for satellites, insats for telecom, broadcasting, meteorology, remote sensing for satellite imagery, to research and development in space. From Aryabhat, a satellite designed and fabricated indigenously and launched from a Soviet rocket in 1975, to now on course to reach the moon and become the first country to explore its south pole. Here we have a majestic lift off of LBM-3 M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. Because that's a place where we can get uh, sufficiently enough solar heat and uh, light for a power generation. If you go further, there is a possibility that you will not get the full daytime use utility. Fifteen years ago, India's first moon mission performed a detailed search of evidence of water and chemical composition of certain lunar rocks. The sky is the limit for the country's space ambitions. India's first space-based mission to study the sun. Aditya L1 nearing its launch date by the end of August or early September. Currently, uh, payloads are getting integrated with the satellite and uh, it will go through a series of testing, including thermovac, vibration, so many things. And uh, after that, we will we'll have the launch. The, it goes in a PSLV. So that will send a commercial launch. So after that, we are already starting another building uh, next to PSLV. Uh, and we are targeting by August end that uh, Aditya can go. ISRO working on the Gaganyaan mission, India's first manned space flight program. Blazing its way through the Earth's final frontier, India establishes itself as a space power and a master of space engineering. Bureau report, India Today. Indians everywhere are cheering for Chandrayaan. Many millions have joined India today's cheer for Chandrayaan campaign as well, where we're closing the gap between your voice and the team that's going to be landing Vikram on the moon tomorrow. Lots of celebrities have also been cheering for Chandrayaan. Take a look. I think it's a great moment for India and uh, a great, a proud moment for each and every Indian. The kind of, uh, you know, you feel that pride in your heart. And as an Indian, all of us, I think, right now, we're waiting to watch it. A lot of people are going to be glued watching it. And um, I'm going to be doing that with my boys as well, with bated breath. We would perhaps be the first to reach there. And I understand that the world might not acknowledge this, but every Indian uh, in his heart or her heart knows that this is a very, very great achievement. 
and um, even if we don't achieve it, that's perfectly fine. I think the, the attempt that we have made is, is stupendous. Nobody has gotten so close, especially on the dark side of the moon. Uh, we've got pictures of the dark side of the moon for the first time. So uh, I think it's a tremendous achievement and we are all elated, proud of whatever you have achieved, Isro. Uh, and uh, may God be, be with you. May the moon be with you. These are great moments. We always keep talking about sports, but these are also a tremendous achievements for the country. So wish them all the best. मुझे इस बात की बहुत खुशी है सब भारतवासियों को खुशी है कि आज हमारा विक्रम लैंडर जो स्पेसक्राफ्ट है वो चांद से बिल्कुल 100 किलोमीटर के आसपास दूर है और ये एक बहुत बड़ी अचीवमेंट है हमारे भारत की पूरे विश्व के लिए पूरे यूनिवर्स के लिए पूरे ह्यूमैनिटी के लिए और मैं सबको मुबारकबाद देता हूं इसरो के चेयरमैन साहब को और उनकी पूरी टीम को And we've got some breaking news coming in on the accidental crash of the Russian Luna 25 lander. Remember that Russian uh, lander had crashed just a few days ago ahead of the Vikram landing. And we now hear that a Russian scientist, Mikhail Marov, who was associated with the Luna 25 program, has been hospitalized. His health has declined after the failure of the Luna 25 mission. Uh, he is said to have uh, uh, actually revealed that he's been disheartened and that this Luna 25 mission was his last hope. A very sad story. Mikhail Marov is a well-known Russian scientist and he says uh, he's, his heart is broken as a result of the loss of Luna 25. He's been hospitalized now. His health has declined. That is the kind of impact, the kind of intensity that space programs have on the people that run them. Many, many emotions are involved. People like Mikhail Marov, uh, you know, have, have sacrificed years of their lives to the commitment of science and the furtherance of the Russian space program. So one can only imagine what the loss of Luna 25 must have been like. I want to bring in India Today's Gaurav Savant very quickly. Uh, uh, Gaurav, uh, you know, a sad story and we wish Mikhail Marov the best of health, uh, but an indicator and a reminder uh, of how much scientists actually put into all of these experimental space programs. Uh, 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 you know, when we say blood, sweat and tears, it is quite literally true. Heart and soul goes into it. And therefore, the loss of something like the Luna 25 can impact a scientist's health, as we're seeing here. Shiv, you're absolutely right. It's a huge blow to Russia's uh, space program. It's a huge blow to Russia's moon mission. A mission after 47 years. Narendra Modi has landed in Johannesburg for the BRICS Summit 2023. Live pictures coming in from Johannesburg, South Africa. Let's listen in. Excitement होती है अब प्रधानमंत्री को देखने की अगर उनके साथ सेल्फी खिंचा पाए वगैरह तो प्रधानमंत्री कुछ देर के लिए उनसे मुलाकात करेंगे फिर सीधा प्रधानमंत्री जो बिजनेस फोरम है उस जो ब्रिक्स बिजनेस फोरम है उसकी लीडर्स मीटिंग पे जाएंगे में शिरकत करेंगे उस मीटिंग के बाद आज प्रधानमंत्री अमृतपाल आप एक मिनट आप खामोश रखिए क्योंकि हम एक वक्त जो तस्वीरें देख रहे हैं जरा उसको ऑडियंस के साथ सुनाना चाहते हैं अपने दर्शकों को प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया हैज लैंडेड इन जोहानसबर्ग टू अ वेरी कलरफुल कल्चरल वेलकम देयर बाय लोकल आर्टिस्ट्स देयर इज अ डांस वेलकम देयर इज आल्सो अ गार्ड ऑफ ऑनर फॉर द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एज ही एज ही एंजॉयज दिस वेरी वेरी नाइस कलरफुल वेलकम फॉर द इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर He's just landed in Johannesburg. He'll be proceeding to his hotel shortly. And then the BRICS summit kicks off. All eyes on what India and China specifically can achieve at the BRICS summit. Let's listen.
सीधी तस्वीरें आप साथ देख रहे हैं इस वक्त जॉनिस बर्ग से प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी अपने विशेष विमान से साउथ अफ्रीका The Prime Minister of India's meeting with the Xi Jinping of China is going to be a big highlight for India most certainly remember the BRICS platform is important by itself but for India as far as takeaways are concerned all eyes diplomatically speaking will be on what developments could perhaps happen between the Indian Prime Minister and his Chinese counterpart uh, remember India and China are currently locked in a major standoff uh, with the, both their militaries massed at each other uh, in in the in eastern ladakh there had been hopes i want to bring gorov in for a word gorov savant is still with me uh, gorov there had been some reports and some word uh, you know that uh, there would be some expectations of possible forward movement either before the brics summit or during the brics summit as far as india china relations are concerned how are things poised what are you hearing gorov So, Shiv, all eyes on the meeting. If at all it happens between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Chinese President Xi Jinping, this is the first in-person BRICS post-COVID. Uh, yeah. Of course, the Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin he would only be joining virtually. But this is a very, very important uh, grouping uh, of uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Now there are other countries who want to join in. Iran wants to join in. South um, uh, Saudi Arabia wants to join in. Bangladesh wants to join in so there would be talk about new countries joining in so let's just talk about the bigger platform as far as the bigger platform is concerned this is the voice of the global south developing countries play a very important role and this is where both china and russia are in a way pushing in a very big way that you need to have somebody uh, who will counter western hegemony as they put it so this could be a very important economic grouping uh, the prime minister also has a meeting so there's brics there's brics plus there is brics um, uh, business forum so uh, and, and a number of bilateral meetings that prime minister narendra modi is scheduled to have if there is one uh, bit with the chinese president there is hope that there would be forward movement on the remaining two friction points uh, depsang and uh, demchok shift do remember wangi um, china's foreign minister yeah. and india's national security advisor ajit doval they met at the brics uh, nsa's conference um, and there was some expectation that there is some some possibility of forward movement and disengagement before g20 summit in india Okay, very important. The G20 summit next month uh, is uh, uh, is is up and running. All anticipation towards that as well. The BRICS summit comes as a bit of a semi-final be before that G20. As far as India's own, uh, you know, positions on many issues are concerned, the global South really is the big focus as far as uh, BRICS is concerned. BRICS, uh, as you know, viewers, stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. It's the global South, the developing world, as it were. Uh, and an offset to the you know groupings like the G7 etc i want to go across now peter fan onselin is live with us from johannesburg he's a journalist uh, in the city there peter thank you very much for your time uh, and for joining us live on the story uh, the indian prime minister has just arrived peter and he's going to be heading to the hotel shortly just take us through uh, you know broadly the contours of the brick summit uh, 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 if you could just take us through what all is going to happen between now and when it begins yeah very good afternoon to you south african time here uh, that is correct uh, the prime minister has touched down maybe about 20 minutes ago yeah. at vatercliff air force base uh, it's about a 40 minute drive from the air force base to the center of santon here which is a, a hive of activity very high police presence i'm going to just update you on what has happened this morning in terms of you mentioning that brics uh, business forum which has been underway this morning a couple of indian representatives uh, top business leaders we heard from nishant arya he is the md of jbm auto that we're just talking about clean energy and, and what south africa and india can learn from each other in terms of electric cars uh, uh, and global warming Uh, and yeah. all of those kind of hot topics uh, have been the center of attention today but everyone's waiting for the prime minister to arrive um he is he will be greeted by a, a large diaspora a contingency yes, here uh, who mm -hmm. are ready to uh, welcome him he will be addressing them today and more importantly at about four o'clock this afternoon uh which is in about two hours from now uh we'll be hearing from all the leaders Uh, all of them have arrived Narendra yeah. Modi is the last leader to arrive although obviously Russian president Vladimir Putin is not here we know that 
uh, that has been a bone of contention in itself. Yes. Um, but between four and five this afternoon, all the BRICS leaders will be literally down the road here, about 100 meters from where I am, uh, and they will give their opening remarks uh, uh, to, uh, to, to the summit. Uh, Peter, you know, you were talking about the Indian diaspora, and we know that uh, there are a lot of Indians who live in, in Johannesburg and the rest of South Africa as well. Uh, and as we've seen from, uh, you know, previous visits by the Indian Prime Minister, interacting with the diaspora is a very important element uh, in his agenda. He usually spends a lot of time with Indians and expats living there. Are there a lot of Indians who've gathered outside the hotel waiting for him right now? I mean, as you know, you might know, I mean, South Africa, it's more in KwaZulu-Natal as the biggest uh, diaspora uh, gathering, I think, outside of India itself. There are huge expat uh, contingency here in South Africa, not so much in Johannesburg compared uh, to Durban uh, in KwaZulu-Natal, but they've mm -hmm. certainly lined up here. There really is a sense of excitement. I can maybe just take you down the road here. There are posters yeah. uh, on the streets uh, of Santon here, uh, and there are a lot of them. Uh, right here, uh, as you can see, I'll show you right here, welcoming uh, Narendra Modi. Um, there is a real sense of excitement uh, of him being here. Uh, and there are probably around, I'd say, 100 to 150 uh, mm. diaspora uh, representatives here to welcome him. And there's a real sense of excitement. They, they don't often yep. get to see him. Uh, and it really is uh, a fantastic occasion for them. Okay, so in about 40 minutes, he's going to be there, uh, you know, when his cavalcade arrives. And I, I, I suppose we'll get those live images of the Prime Minister interacting with the diaspora. One final question, Peter. Uh, you know, for us here in India, we're getting set for the G20 summit that kicks off, uh, you know, early next month here in India. India is hosting the G20 summit. The BRICS is being seen as a very important precursor to that. You know, a representation of the global south. Uh, in many ways an offset to, uh, you know, other, other groupings like the G7. India specifically is, uh, uh, you know, we don't know if there's going to be a bilateral between the Indian Prime Minister and the Chinese uh, Premier at this point of time. Are you hearing anything about that? Well, that's the big question. I mean, I, I, we would love to know. There's no official yeah. word on whether there will be a bilateral uh, between the two countries. Uh, that is the big question. It, a lot of people are talking about it here, considering the tensions are, are on the border between the two countries. We know they haven't met uh, in person together since 2019. Um, you know, it will be a matter of the two uh, government officials maybe getting together on the sidelines. We know this evening uh, there is a, a, a gathering of the leaders uh, in a fairly informal setting. Uh, and it might, it might be one of those instances uh, that gets set up at the last minute. But I've looked at the program of events uh, yeah. And there's obviously nothing official uh, that um, uh, that the two leaders are going to meet. What must be said is that Xi Jinping is on a state visit. He was at the Union Buildings the whole morning this morning, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, President Sil Ramaphosa welcoming them there. They signed into uh, into an agreement, 11 specific agreements. The focus is on China. A lot of people seem to want the time of the Chinese president. Um, we have a lot of question marks over who will be the additional members of BRICS after this summit. I don't have an official word on whether there will be a bilateral between uh, Narendra Modi and Xi Jinping uh, over the next few days. Okay, I'm not, I'm not surprised at all to hear that nothing is official as far as that uh, is concerned. Okay, we've got some live uh, pictures. Peter, stay with me. Let's just get some live uh, sound also in of the Prime Minister meeting with Indians right outside uh, I think this is outside the airport. कह रहे थे कि आठ-आठ पीढ़ियों से लोग वहाँ मौजूद हैं देखिए ये थाल जो एक स्वागत के लिए होता है इसमें थाल में तिरंगा भी नजर आ रहा है अक्षत भी नजर आ रहा है रोली चंदन भी नजर आ रहा है जब आप किसी अपने का स्वागत करते हैं किसी मेहमान का तो अक्षत भी देते हैं तो वो सारी परंपराएं जो और देखिए मेरी कोशिश ये रहती है हमारी कोशिश ये रहती है डीडी न्यूज़ की कोशिश ये रहती है कि इन तमाम कार्यक्रमों के जरिए हम कुछ फैक्ट्स लगातार आपको जानकारी आपकी ज्ञान वृद्धि के लिए देते रहें Wish Doordarshan would give us some sound. Unfortunately, they've decided to keep it with their uh, studio discussion when viewers want to hear what's happening on the ground. Sadly, uh, once that sound comes in, we're going to put that sound up. So it's on Doordarshan, not us. But here are pictures of the Prime Minister uh, doing what he loves best, really. Uh, you know, no matter what the occasion, no matter what the summit he's attending, 
the prime minister makes it a point to leave some time aside uh, to interact with the adoring diaspora who've come from far and wide to see the prime minister. Uh, and they make it really easy for him because they throng the airport, they line the roads, they'll be right outside his hotel when he arrives. So he doesn't really usually have to go anywhere to meet them because they all collect in order to try and get, uh, you know, get, uh, you know, get some kind of a interaction uh, in with the prime minister. Uh, sometimes he holds uh, large, uh, you know, arena events uh, like he has at the Madison Square Garden in Sydney and elsewhere, uh, the Wembley Arena, the O2 Arena in UK as well for diaspora. Uh, but this time, uh, I don't think there is a separate diaspora event. Nonetheless, here's the Prime Minister in his element meeting and greeting the Indian diaspora. Big smiles and lots of cheers. Unfortunately, Durdarshan isn't giving us any sound at this point of time. Uh, Gaurav Savant is still with me. Gaurav, huge Indian diaspora in South Africa. India has a long history of relations with South Africa as well. Uh, you know, what's going through your mind as you see these pictures? Prime Minister in his element. Shiv, what a journey from the time that Mahatma Gandhi was in <coughs> yeah. South Africa. He, came, he returned to India in 1915 to the time that Prime Minister Narendra Modi is visiting there, of course, for the third time. Um, and this is the BRICS summit. It's a very, very important summit, especially this uh, uh, first in-person summit post-COVID because there are a number of very important aspects. You know, like China is trying to increase uh, its footprint in Africa. India again, uh, you know, with with with, uh, with uh, Japan, with France, with European countries, and with the United States playing an equally big role, trying to increase India's footprint or democracy's footprint across Africa. There's a big game on across Africa where Russia is also now trying to play a very big role. Uh, remember, whether it's Niger or a number of countries around, Russia yeah. has moved in in a very big way. So Africa, once again, across the continent, there's a big game on. And this BRICS summit becomes extremely crucial. The point that was also being raised about which will be the new country uh, which will come in. Will, will it be Iran? Will it be Bangladesh? What about, South, uh, what about Saudi Arabia? Several countries want to be a part of this grouping because this grouping is also seen as a very powerful economic grouping against what uh, many describe as the, is the Western hegemony. Uh, or there's an attempt also to, to, to see, to figure out whether, uh, you know, dollars dominance uh, across global economic market can be countered. This meeting, this BRICS summit will be very crucial from the multilateral point of view and when it comes to India and China from the bilateral point of view to see whether there is forward movement at the remaining friction points at a time when both countries have actually, as you and I have both reported, they've been strengthening their defenses all along the line of actual control from eastern Ladakh to Arunachal Pradesh. Very, very interesting. Uh, you know, so much to achieve at the, on the BRICS platform itself. Uh, many things that India will, uh, decisions that uh, the world will be looking for India to take, uh, you know, via the BRICS platform as well. Uh, uh, the, the Global South, leadership of the Global South, a source of stability uh, in a region that is increasingly unstable. Many of the things that are being pegged uh, on, India's, uh, on, on India's mantle. Uh, Peter continues to be with us. He's live from outside the hotel where the Prime Minister of India will be staying. Pre uh, Peter, very familiar images coming in live. Uh, I, I'm not sure where these are from. I, I, I don't know if it's outside the hotel or elsewhere, but the Prime Minister being thronged by a large crowd of Indian diaspora. Just wanted to check, Peter. Uh, uh, these, the, you know, these impromptu interactions are, uh, you know, are, are to be expected. Is there a separate... Uh, event that the Indian Prime Minister is going to be addressing with Indian diaspora, or is that not part of the agenda on this visit? And, and officially, I think he will be. I think they're just welcoming him. I it's not on the official program that he will be yeah. addressing the diaspora. I think they have set up uh, a, a sort of area there that he can uh, address them and, 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 and you know, welcome them uh, you know, to see him. Um, they, you know, there is some form of accreditation that they've had to go through. The security is is extremely high here. So all mm. the diaspora people have had to, you know, get accredited and, and have security checks. So there, there is word that he will officially brief them. Um, but the next official um, engagement that the, pre the prime minister will have uh, is that leaders summit, which will be happening at around uh, that. Sorry, the leaders uh, talk opening remarks uh, at about four o'clock, which is in about you know, an hour and a half from now, um, you know, that, that, that's when his first official engagement will be.
Okay, that's when that first, uh, that the, the first engagement is going to be there. Uh, in a couple of hours from now, uh, there will be a statement from all the leader, uh, leaders of BRICS who are all assembled there. The Prime Minister is the last to reach. Uh, Putin uh, is not going to be there. Uh, you know, what's the buzz on the ground about that, uh, Peter? About Putin not uh, coming in? I'm sure that's been quite a bone of contention. No, look, there is obviously, the audio is not great. It's really a hive of activity here. There, there are police trucks everywhere. There is security everywhere here. Uh, you know, just if I heard your, your, your question correctly, there, there's so many issues on the cards here uh, about multilateralism, about the growth of these economies uh, and working together. The big talkers of this uh, BRICS Development Bank uh, and our reliance on the U.S. dollar. Uh, based uh, people are trying to work away from that also plenty of speculation about who will be the new members uh, they've made it pretty clear that there well may be new members uh, after this week's summit uh, and the questions are who will they be iran top of that list as well which may not impress uh, a lot of the people uh, in the global north um, they've got a, we've got the AGOA summit coming up in a few months' time. So President Ramaphosa really has to uh, tread very carefully here in terms of how he deals uh, with all of these BRICS nations. But there seems to be a, a tight-knit group. The big elephant in the room is obviously the war in Ukraine with the mm. Russian president uh, not here. Um, he will join that uh, summit, uh, that leader's uh, opening remarks virtually uh, at four o'clock this afternoon. Uh, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister for Russia, he has uh, touched down here today. So he yes. will be representing Russia uh, in that regard. Um, that is the big elephant in, in the room right now at how Russia will be using this BRIC summit to gain support globally uh, from these, uh, from all these other countries as well. So that uh, uh, will be interesting to see how they navigate that topic. This is diplomacy in uh, motion. There are uh, hopefully going to be many more takeaways from BRICS. It's all going to kick off very, very shortly. What Peter has outlined for us here is that uh, there is the weight of expectations on platforms and summits like the, uh, like the BRICS summit. Uh, there are many more summits that are going to happen. The big elephant in the room, Russia, Ukraine, the war. It's been over a year since that invasion began, and we all know where things have gone since then. Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, not going to be there, going to be absolutely deafeningly conspicuous by his absence. His foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, who you've heard here in India today through the conflict, has touched down in South Africa for the BRICS summit as Putin's representative. So we'll get you the latest from the BRICS summit. We have our man on the ground, Peter, who's going to be reporting all of those big, big developments for us. The prime minister of India has just touched down and we'll get you those statements as and when they're happening.